it is so damn good seeing Spyro the Dragon back in the spotlight. I love the Reignited trilogy. In my opinion, that is the way to experience those original games. Even the version on the Switch is pretty solid. Activision recently hooked me up with a code and I have been playing it a bunch ever since. It's got very minor problems here or there, but it is totally playable. And now having these remastered games on the go? Oh man, I am loving this. Going forward, this may actually be my preferred way of playing this trilogy. And alongside all the fan service in the Spyro and Friends Grand Prix and Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled, oh, to say that I am hopeful for a bright future for the Purple Dragon would really be underselling it. Did you invite me over just to talk about... Hey, Stan! <laughs> Did you invite me over just to talk about Spyro Reignited on the Switch? I'm sorry, is that a problem? Hey man, you promised me some old school Spyro today. That's an offer I couldn't pass up. Fair enough. You know, since Spyro is back and the Reignited trilogy is so good, I figured it would be a little fun to take a look at the not so great parts of this franchise. Now we both already took a look at Enter the Dragonfly, that's the obvious one, and that's still not not a very good game at all, but have you played any other bad Spyro game besides Enter the Dragonfly and Spyro Orange? No, not at all. I mean, I know that the whole YouTube game reviewer thing requires that I have to play bad games, but uh, there's only so far I'm willing to go. Why did I invite you over then? For the warm embrace of... Friendship. Similar to Crash Bandicoot, the second the rights for Spyro were no longer under the original creators, things went downhill hard and fast. Enter the Dragonfly, my god. <laughs> At the very least though, Crash, in my opinion, still had a fairly alright life leading up to his massive hiatus. Spyro, on the other hand, things were a whole lot rougher. The Game Boy Advance though. For whatever reason, despite different developers and less powerful hardware, not only did Crash have some solid adventures, but Spyro did too. Season of Ice, Season of Flame, Attack of the Rhinox, they're all pretty alright. Original plots with not terrible isometric gameplay and decent enough music, the GBA arguably had the better titles for both characters than on console. Boy, what a time to be alive. Crash and Spyro were both alive and dead at the same time, it sucked. And then Spyro Orange happened, and if this game remains on my screen any longer, so help me. But to really start this adventure off, Spyro 1. Alright, this one confuses me. Are you about to hot take and say Spyro 1 is bad? I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of the original myself, but <laughs> there you go. No chance, man. This game is a classic. Except for in Japan, where it's infinitely worse. And quite frankly, I have no idea when else I'll be able to talk about this. Yatta! Oh my word, is that... Is that a fixed camera? Yes, my friend, yes it is. You see, since I guess Japanese audiences couldn't really fathom the free camera of the game that everyone else got, Insomniac figured a fixed camera would be the way to go. On top of that, the camera fades out and in for the whirlwinds as well as when you enter a level. There are tutorial signposts all over the place that get activated with flame breath, so hitting them constantly, accidentally, is inevitable. And uh, let me, let me just see here. Ah yes, you run slower too. This is dreadful. That's so crazy. You know, I always liked the modifications to Crash's design to appeal to Japan. That was neat and still something done nowadays, but for Spyro, was the camera really the main idea they had? For years I thought Spyro 1 in Japan was the reason Ripto got his name. I had no idea the game underneath was worse. Speaking of Ripto though, surely they fixed this for the Japanese Spyro 2. Oh no, they kept it. Why? There's like these weird dragonfly egg things that work with the pocket station, which was apparently actually a pretty popular thing in Japan. And with them, you essentially have access to a dragonfly Tamagotchi of sorts. So there's that. But yeah, no, Spyro in Japan, not good. It's no surprise that Year of the Dragon was never released there. Yeah, what the hell, Toys for Bob? Why didn't you put this in the Reignited trilogy so I can raise a dragonfly on my Vita? But hey, only Japan had to deal with that one. Aside from Enter the Dragonfly, it would be another few years before the rest of the world got their hands on some sweet, genuine garbage. I don't like the tone of your voice. How bad is this gonna be? Ah, uh, no worries. The Legend of Spyro games. Oh! Well, it's not so bad. Unportable. 
All right, so I'll admit that maybe I was a bit too harsh when I covered the Legend of Spyro trilogy. They do have their quality moments for sure, but overall, not really my thing. And it being based on the light and colorful classic Spyro that preceded it, well, that's just something I could never get behind. But regardless of my thoughts on that, Oh god, I know we didn't deserve this. This subseries not only spawned three games across multiple consoles, but five games across the GBA and DS. Now when Crash did this, to say that we got games of a mixed quality would really not do it justice. But hey, that wouldn't be fair to go into Spyro with that expectation, so let's see what The Legend of Spyro A New Beginning has to offer us on the Game Boy Advance. Well, it's ugly looking for a start. It's a good thing Spyro's purple here because, wow, the colours for everything else just blend together. And this is from the raw footage being blown up. I shudder to think how blurry it is if you were playing this on an actual Game Boy Advance. It just seems like a generic beat-em-up. No more, no less. I mean, say what you will about the environments, but having that third dimension at least made them feel fully fleshed out. This looks like the epitome of uninspired. And, what? Why are we playing Whack-A-Mole all of a sudden? Oh man, it's just a monotonous slog of button mashing combat that requires no skill and provides no challenge. It would be one thing if the combat were at least satisfying, but it's so boring and hits have no impact whatsoever, it's not a fun time. Especially for the bosses, where you can just stand there and attack for a couple of minutes and then boom, done. They do try to throw some variety in there from time to time. Emphasis on try, yeah this is dreadful. And as much as I'm ready to continue complaining about Eternal Night on GBA just being more of the same, uh, I'll, I'll be damned, this isn't that bad? Yeah, the art style, once again, doesn't really pop a whole lot, but the sprites for Spyro and the enemies are way more detailed. The combat system is surprisingly deeper, there's a heavier emphasis on exploration, and he has some brand new moves to help you get along. It's not amazing by any means, but it's definitely an improvement. And at least the boss fights actually require me to do things this time around, so that's nice. So for the one person out there who was clamoring for a Spyro the Dragon beat em up on Game Boy Advance that wasn't terrible, here you go, here's your game. The DS though, now I'm a bit more interested. I remember back when we looked at Crash Bandicoot on DS, we discovered the Titans was shockingly not that bad. A decent blend of old school and new school Crash, I was kind of impressed. Mind Over Mutant was crap, but I'm still going into this with some optimism. So as for new beginning on DS, well, I can barely even see Spyro, so that's a good start. When you get your bearing of things, it's just, once again, a very repetitive and unsatisfying button mashing beat em up. Except with some touch controls, yeah, because what's a low effort DS game without some shoehorned touch controls? Did. did Spyro die from an oversized fly? Why didn't you kill it? I saw you attack it. Ah, that's because there are certain enemies in this game that can only be killed from the touchscreen, not Spyro himself. May I interest you in a handful of mirror puzzles? How about an entire flying segment being removed, despite it being in the Game Boy Advance version? How about the fact that the game has no music? Can I leave now? Absolutely not, because now it's time for a good old feeling of whiplash. Here's what the DS version of Eternal Night looks like. You're joking me. This, this actually looks like a Spyro game. What's this? What's this? There's Spyro everywhere. There's dragonflies in the, sorry. <laughs> I know I was supposed to talk about nothing but bad games today, but dude, this game's actually all right. Now you can properly explore 3D spaces and those spaces look pretty solid. The combat feels loads better and even features some touchscreen controls that are actually satisfying and not the garbage from the first game. And oh, oh my goodness, is that platforming? Yeah, the draw distance is disgusting, but it's the DS here. There's only so much we can work with. The mirror puzzles return as well, and even though it doesn't make any sense whatsoever for them to be in these games, I'll be honest, I just like puzzle games, so this is fine by me, no matter how unnecessary this is. Like, to progress in the game, you gotta find these mirror pieces along the overworlds, and it's not difficult in the slightest. It's not a good mechanic, but because it's a puzzle game, I'm okay with it. The continuity is a bit weird as well, since you fight the Elder Dragons as as boss fights after Spyro passes out, which isn't what happens in the console version, but quite frankly, the rest of this game goes for its own thing, so I will just accept this, because this is a surprisingly alright game. Alright, so, if Eternal Night and Titans are similar for these two franchises, and Mind Over Mutant came next and undid all the good qualities of the game before it, oh no, a side-scroller, oh, 
with delayed controls too. How splendid. When did this happen to both franchises? Why did we get games that far exceeded expectations right before going right back into mediocre side-scrollers? What, just so the story of Crash and Spyro having parallel series can continue? From what I can tell, this is just more of the same as the two GBA games. Is that accurate? Yeah, more or less. They just overcomplicated it though. On the console version, each dragon can utilize four different breaths, which was actually kind of neat. But when you restrict that idea to more linear 2D level design, it just becomes kind of annoying having to constantly swap between dragons and breaths just because, hey, that block can't be destroyed by the one thing you currently have. They did finally get a flying segment in here, but it's just minutes of barely doing anything as the level flies by around you. Imagine a Star Fox level, but there's only like 10 enemies. Wasn't free flight one of the biggest selling points of the console version? If they were gonna go limited to such an extreme level, they should have just done something more unique, like how Eternal Night handled things, and the artwork for the cutscenes. Oh my god! Oftentimes, portable versions of console games just tend to not be all that great, so no matter what you think of the Legend of Spyro trilogy on console, avoid these games. Avoid them. They're, they're garbage. Except for Eternal Night. Somehow both versions of that game, not terrible. You see, that wasn't so bad. You don't look too thrilled about this. You saved the worst for last, didn't you? Oh, how'd you know? You see, there's this little game called Spyro Shadow Legacy for the DS. No, no, it's been a whole year since the bad Crash Game Disaster of 2018, and I thought you would have softened up by now. But no, you've apparently lost it since you've run out of Kirby games to talk about. I mean, gee, I want to play video games. Okay, but what if I told you that canonically, this is Spyro 6. What? Spyro the Dragon Shadow Legacy, a game that takes place after the events of A Hero's Tale, which came out after Enter the Dragonfly, which happened after the initial trilogy. Yeah, this is Spyro the Dragon 6, folks. Just accept it. Which also means that before the Reignited trilogy brought our precious dragon back to life, this is the final game to use the classic Spyro design. And who? Boy, what a way to go out. Literally five seconds into turning this game on, it shows off these same sentences on both screens for some reason. This is the level of ridiculousness we're dealing with here. This. This is Spyro. This looks like an RPG. You get experience points for defeating enemies and everything. I mean, I get when Legends did it, that entire series was based off of a different style, but what is this? And why is it so sl- Did that sheep explode? What am I looking at? Oh, Spyro, how are you? How sad that another summer is coming to an end. Oh, how I love those. Wait for it. Summer nights. Are you not entertained by the plot, Caddy? Bugger off! All right, I'm being way too mean here. Let's give this a solid shot. This is a mainline Spyro game after all. Let's see what we have to work with. Essentially, all of the Elder Dragons got banished into the Shadow Realm when Spyro wasn't looking, and it's your job to save them. All right, you know, that sounds pretty similar to the story of Spyro 1, except this time, instead of the peaceful world of dragons, you travel through hell, basically, and to successfully complete your mission, you run around a town, very slowly, attack a bunch of hell demons, very slowly, read through a lot of text boxes, very slowly, and you save all the dragons. Oh, and don't worry, there is some platforming too. And yeah, it's bad. And maybe, if you're like me, you think, oh, that's just a tutorial. Once we get past all this, you know, I've learned all the moves, we can progress on with the real game. Let's go ahead and travel to the next town. Oh, hey, look at that, you do the same exact thing, and then you travel to another town, and you do the same exact thing, and once again after that, this is it. This is it. This is the entire game, just saving dragons endlessly. Oh no. I don't know if you were trying to sell me on this game, Ant, but you did a terrible job of it. Nicely done. Luckily, this era of Spyro seems to be over because, wow, these things were way rougher for the Dragon than they were for the Bandicoot. You could argue that all these games were on portable, so they didn't matter as much as the console games, which still did garner some fans, but I don't agree. These games are absolutely partially responsible for Spyro's name being dragged through the mud for so long. And was that all worth it for just decent versions of Eternal Night? I don't think so. Before. Okay, can we please be done now? We've done a bad Crash game episode and we've done a bad Spyro game episode. Haven't we done all of it by this point? I figured you'd sunk to the bottom of the barrel when you talked about the Japanese exclusive Spyro 1. I mean, what else is there? We're done, aren't we? You are absolutely correct, Caddy, and I want to thank you for this. This has genuinely been a really fun time, despite your torment. But what say we finally take a look at Skylanders? I will fight you. Oh, you know what? That's totally fine. 
How about a good old game of Crash Room Bash Room instead? Why do you like this? That is a damn good question.